They don't care about the rest of crypto. I mean, they're actively rooting for an ETF to save their bags for this cycle. Yeah. I and mean, they're literally rooting for like anti-crypto. And then uh, again, Richard tweeting about, so we've seen the IRS and the SEC rulings that um, are coming up that you could have submitted comments on that those are now expired. Your comments would have been due. But uh, now tweeting about this FinCEN policy against mixers. So, you know, if you hear about crypto mixers, Tornado Cash comes to mind. That's one that they kind of just unilaterally went after and threw, they threw the guy in jail, right? Yeah, the guy that, I think uh, he's still there. Yeah. I haven't heard anything about him getting out. I, I you know, I think they they threw him in jail and were, he was supposed to get some sort of trial, but I don't know that it's even happened yet. Right. Well, this is applicable to those kind of scenarios. So um, if you check Richard tweets from the other day, I'll see if I can grab it. I have it in my bookmark tweets. But uh, it's the proposal of a special measure regarding convertible virtual currency mixing as a class of transactions of primary money laundering concern. In other words, um, they're trying to ban anything that's a mixer because they think it's only going to be money laundering and things like right. that. Comments on it are not due until the 22nd of January. So you've got like 50, I don't know, 55 days or something like that. Yeah. Um, but essentially what Richard was trying to say is it's a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights. And I have the link to the actual thing right here. So I'll go ahead and drop that in if anybody wants to check it out and kind of go the same route that we did with the other things. But it's it's a good one to to check out as well. I mean, like this is... This is the funny thing is he's tweeting about all these policies, you know, from, again, these three letter fence and I guess six, but <laughs> these agencies within the United States that are, you know, trying to, he knows that different types of regulation is coming. The, the thing is, a lot of these people in crypto are not talking about what those specific regulations are, who are the ones coming after it, what they're trying to impose. Richard's actually highlighting people to that, tweeting out the comments that people can submit and you can actually review this stuff and have input. And he like tags yeah. Bitcoin every time that he does it. I don't see like some of these big influencer channels and stuff like that talking about these things. And this is what, you know, is going to shape the future of our industry here. Right. Um, so, yeah. What do you make of his continued <clears throat> focus on this? And why do you think it is, though, that the Bitcoin maxis that kind of just want to like tweet out like bitcoin solves everything laser eyes well and that's out. part of the problem man I, that's why i don't even like the fact that he tags the bitcoin guys only because they don't care mm -hmm. uh it's the sec as the, has determined that as of right now they're the only ones that are officially a commodity um right. they don't want to help anybody else they want to be the only thing that's out there um, I would much prefer if he was tagging the Ethereum folks, uh, because there's a lot of other people in the same situation um, that could do something about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I started to read through that whole FinCEN thing, and I got down there, and I'm like, I realized that I was only a quarter of the way through the page. <laughs> and I'm like, holy, it's a lot of yeah. lawyer speak. It's a lot of, um, you know, it, it's all about anti-terrorism stuff and how they think that that's how they're going to do it. And um, it's the only thing that it's used for. Uh, and then there's a tiny little bit of down there. Oh, except when people want to make payments and, and not have their, their wallet shown or don't want to know what, if, if say you have an internet business um, and you pay people in crypto, what if you don't want the other employees to know who's making what salary? Um, right. There's a privacy element there. And that's what Richard's always been about. You know, if I make payments to somebody, I don't want them to see my wallet. I don't want them to see how much I have or, or whatever. I don't want to create a target. Um, little things like that that are super important. And, and we all know uh, the terrorism is funded by cash. Uh, you know, yeah. they're, they're, they're not really using crypto. It's, it's just, it's the blockchain is, um, there for a reason and yeah, they're just, they're not using tornado or mixers or things like that. So, uh, yeah, it does come down to the privacy issue and, and yes, there are going to be bad actors that use things no matter what you do, no matter what product you have. Um, yeah, there are bad actors in the space, no matter where. So. Yeah, I just like I said, I, I I'm not a fan of tagging the Bitcoin 
bros because, again, they don't really participate in any kind of help for any other community. Um, I think Ethereum, maybe the Cardano people, maybe the Ripple people would get on board with things. Now, Ripple's a little different, too. Um, and, and I do believe that their appeal was just thrown out, or the SEC's appeal to Ripple was just thrown out. So I, I'm pretty sure that's about over. Um, so, you know, the more that, the, the less that some of these people are going through, uh, the less willing they're probably going to be able to help other people do the same. Um, I wish it wasn't that way, but I, I really think it is. Yeah, I am with you, and I do understand where you're coming from with tagging the Bitcoin bros, um, because they don't care. They don't give a shit about Richard Hart. They don't like Richard no. Hart, and they don't they don't care about the rest of crypto. I mean, they're actively rooting for an ETF to save their bags for this cycle. Yeah, I mean, they're literally rooting for like anti crypto at yeah. this point. Um, so, man, I, I don't really know what to. T I, I don't understand the hypocrisy with that group or that bunch. Um, but kudos to Richard for tweeting it out. And I'm with you. I, I do think maybe tagging Ethereum is probably a better idea, which I think he does that sometimes. But traditionally on these tweets, he is tagging Bitcoin. So yeah. um, maybe he's just trying to prove a point that like, hey, you guys should give a shit about this and you don't. What's the problem here? Well, and that is too. Maybe he's just calling them out for not caring. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. he has done that in the past too. I think that very well could be it. But yeah. um, either way, for you guys watching who do actually care about this stuff, um, there is the link in the chat. I did post it if you want to check it out um, and go ahead and submit comments for that as well. Um, and it's very easy. I mean, if you want to use the AI tools that we've used before, I mean, you could very easily do that with ChatGPT or whatever you prefer. So um, check that out. And in terms of us taking action on things, um pulsepetition.org so the amicus brief in support of richard hart is now up over at least 28k signatures at last check um and probably approaching 30 i'd imagine which would be the next milestone so if you guys have not looked into that or signed it uh if you believe in what is being preached on there go read it obviously it's basically about real DeFi. it was coordinated by crypto coffee kinetics and a man that they mutually know that i don't remember the name of uh, <laughs> but um check it out um give it a sign uh help contribute don't worry about doxing yourself and stuff i mean you will dox yourself but i mean i wouldn't worry about it i mean this is something that you want to if you care about this and want to support it then you know go ahead i'm not going to tell you what to do but i think uh you know if you believe in this stuff you'd be encouraged how many are we at there i can't see it says 29,888. So we're there you almost go. at 30,000. I think the goal is still 50,000 um, that they would like to get to. But 30,000 is a is a great stepping stone. Excuse me. It definitely is. I mean, I think some people at first, like 10,000 was the milestone. And they thought that that's all they would get to. And obviously, like the longer there is a reason for an amicus brief to be uh, signed, the, the more signatures are going to come. So um, and I believe and I don't know all the details of it. I'll have to look into this more because I, I think I heard Corey Gary again. I was listening to those guys today. Um, I think I heard that the amicus brief that was filed on behalf of XRP um, the judge actually took very seriously and had a lot of signatures. I'll have to look into that. I don't want to speak out of turn, but it would be interesting to see that as well. And I imagine some of these judges, if they're honest, which, you know, they are human beings, so who knows, and former lawyers many times. Um, but, you know, if they are honest and, and you are dealing with this crypto stuff that you yourself likely don't very know much about, it'd be good to take into account something like an amicus brief. Yeah. Um, from people who do know what they're talking about. At the very least, would make you open your mind to say like, okay, they're talking about DeFi here. They're talking about Pulse Chain, but these guys in this in this lawsuit said that PulseX is on Ethereum. I don't understand what's going on here. So it might be good to like hear other people's side who actually know what's going on too. Absolutely. Um, 